Hey guys. Um, okay. Sorry it took me so long. I will um, wait just a few minutes for people to get on, but um, I'm trying to fix this. I was fooling around with my laptop trying to do it from there so I don't have to do it from my phone. So, um, okay. I'm going to give people just a few minutes. I know I said 12 and it's like 10 minutes after, but for some reason my laptop wasn't connecting to the internet and then um, when I did get it to finally connect to the internet, it couldn't find my camera. So I don't know what's going on with it. But um, what I want to address with y'all are just a few questions that I have been seeing um, over and over. Actually, hold on just a minute while we're waiting on people. Okay, sorry. Um, want to know? Oops. I guess I'm swiping the wrong way. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Anyway, um, okay. So um, there's just a few questions that I've been seeing a lot, and I wanted to kind of go over a few things. In regards to fundraisers, I know we have a lot of new people on the page. Um, since reunion, we had a lot of people come by our booth at reunion. And then, um, of course, with our amazing offer this month with joining, we've had new people. So um, we have been approving people right and left. And just a quick FYI, which I posted earlier, if you have team members that are still waiting approval, it's because when... Um, any of us look at their Facebook page, we cannot see their, um, we can't see that they're a consultant. They don't have their website on there or they don't have um, anything posted about Sensi that we can see. So uh, that may be the reason they haven't been approved for um, the page yet. Okay, so I don't know why I cannot see y'all's comments or if y'all, if who's on or whatever, I don't know why it's not showing me. But it's not. So if y'all have questions, I'm sorry. I won't be able to see them. Okay. So, um, one, okay, good. Somebody commented so I can see it. Um, I will actually have to read that in just a second because I want to cover a few things and see if it answers your question first. And then if it doesn't, just let me know. Um, so one of the big questions that I see most is, how do you get fundraisers? And actually, I see that's your first question. Um, the best advice I have for you on getting fundraisers is ask. You just, you actually, I mean, you ask people. You get out there. You talk to them. Um, you post. Post on Facebook. A lot of people don't know that, know that we actually do fundraisers. They think that all we do are home parties. We're just a home party-based company, which is what we are, but... They think that's all we do. So ask about um, ask about getting them, and um, and then like I said, post about it. Use your um, use your fundraiser stickers if you have them. Put your fundraiser stickers on your catalogs. I put them when I mail something out. Um, I will seal the envelope with those little fundraiser stickers, so that way people know. And of course, my return address has my website on it, my information. So um, let's see. One of the things that I wanted to um, tell y'all about, I had a little story where, and I mentioned it on a call the other day, but I, had a, I was at the gas station a few days ago, and I was taking my son to football practice. So I'm sitting there pumping my gas, and the guy next to me is coming out of the store, and he has a trailer full of football equipment. And he kind of looks at me and nods and says hello and I know that's kind of a southern thing people don't always do that everywhere but um he nods and says hello and I said hey and um my son was in the car with me and I said hey I got a football player here if you want to take him if you want to take him to your practice looks like you're going to football practice and he's like well bring him on and 
anyway, he was, come to find out, we just, that kind of opened up the conversation. I found something we had in common, and he is the director of our local independent league football organization, and my son plays a different league he plays for the city, or he did, he quit. <laughs> but um, anyway, so mm -hmm. I got to talking mm -hmm. to him, and he said that um, he was trying to, of course, recruit my son into their league and away from the city, but then I started to talk to him about fundraisers. I said, well, I, I know y'all do fundraisers with this with the um, independent league. I said, um, you do know Cincy does fundraisers, don't you? And he said, no, I didn't know that. I said, yeah, we do fundraisers. I do them all the time. I said, I do know that Kaya has done them before. And so he said, well, here, let me give you the information to our fundraiser coordinator, and I want you to give her a call. So that is something we just kind of, I found something I had in common with someone and work that into our conversation. So just talking about it, asking people, um, and when it comes to school fundraisers, I know a lot of people have questions about school fundraisers and how do you get actually get a school fundraiser. Um, school front fundraisers can be uh, little, a little iffy. You don't ever know. It's going to depend on your local school district. It's going to depend on the city, the county. Um, so it'll depend on that. Some local, some school districts require that you go through the school board to ever approach the schools. You don't have permission to, because it would be considered soliciting. So you don't have permission to approach the schools unless you go through the school board. Um, and then some don't require that. So that's something you're gonna have to check with locally with your local school district and find out if you need to have a permission form through the school board. Um, so when I did our first fundraiser here with our school, it was 800 kids. Um, it wasn't my first fundraiser, just with the school. And I actually split it with a consultant in my downline. We both worked together on getting that fundraiser. We both worked together on working the fundraiser. So when I got that one um, for the first time, we had permission from the school board. She had worked on that, but I made the appointment with the principal because our PTO president, president was in transition. So I made an appointment with the principal to discuss, <laughs> like my dear heads, huh? <laughs> anyway, uh, so I made an appointment with the um, principal and we sat down with her and we laid it out, told her the benefits, she said they were tired of doing the regular fundraisers and we just kind of showed her what all the benefits were with Cincy and that it was something different and she was ready for it. So after that, we did that one, that went over really well. After that, we had to go to the PTO president and well, to be honest, after that one, the, um, the PTO president saw how easy it was and contacted me to do another one. But then from here on out, we have to go through the PTO president. And at that point, sometimes you have to present something in front of the PTO, which we did. I went and presented and all I did was take the fundraiser packet. Oh yeah, Karen, I got makeup on. <laughs> or Celeste, I got makeup on. Um, I showed him the fundraiser packet that I had put together that we had done before and just went that route. So as far as schools go, I can go into more detail about that at a later date, but if you have any more questions, you can let me know. Let's see, one, Lindsay said, um, RPTA won't allow dis direct sales. I do hope to ask my kids' teachers, teachers about doing a classroom only one. Um, and yes, you can do that, especially when you're getting into things like field trips. Like uh, I know our fifth grade here does a big end of the year field trip because they're getting ready to go to middle school. So you can always go through the teachers. Um, they do have rules like that sometimes about not allowing direct sales and things, but I know our PTO does not have those rules. So you have to fill out your local school district and find out what's allowed and what's not allowed. Not all schools are going to allow Sensi. Um, like Lindsay said, theirs won't allow direct sales. And not all school boards are going to allow you to approach them. Now, 
as far as other fundraisers like um, the ones with daycares and things like that. Here's my take on it. Um, a lot of people want to ask, do you, you know, do you just mail them out stuff? Do you mail stuff out? I honestly believe that some of that might be a waste of time or a waste of money and simply because if you mail something they may or may not look at it now you may have to go that route if you can't get appointments with people if you email something more than likely it's going to be deleted so I would definitely not go the email route of emailing different daycares emailing different schools emailing people aren't going to look at it and that's just my opinion someone else may have a another um, they may have a more positive experience with it but that my opinion is you need to actually be face to face with them you need to make an appointment and I'm not talking about going up to a school or a daycare and saying um, hey we do fundraisers here you go you can walk into a daycare give them a packet and let them know or but what I would do is walk in there or give them a call and say I would like I wanted to let y'all know that I did fundraisers and I know that your daycare does fundraisers um, if I'd love to make an appointment with the director of the daycare or your fundraiser coordinator or whoever it may be and discuss the benefits of a Cincy fundraiser and how easy it can be for y'all so um, that's just kind of my take on that it's more of a face-to-face -face thing and not a um, not an email thing. Now the mailing, that's kind of iffy. They may look at it and love it. Then again, they may not even look at it. I just like the face-to-face. -face. Okay, so that's kind of some of the ideas of how to get fundraisers. Um, one of the other questions, I kind of made a list of questions. One of the other questions I got or that I see a lot is what's the best type of fundraiser? Because we do have the Scent Circle fundraisers, we have the showcase brochures, we have um, the car bars, the buddy clips. We have so many different kinds. You can create any fundraiser you want to create. And we have some great documents on this site or on this page. And everything is in the document section or the file section. I forget what Facebook calls it, but it's in that section and that's where you're going to find some of the documents that people have loaded um, we have some great people on here that are a lot more creative than I am I'm not very creative with making these documents I try but I'm not very creative so um, anyway, uh, let's see the best type in my experience what I do is when I have someone, someone that wants to do a fundraiser, I'll show them the different types. I have them laid out. I have the full fundraiser packet. I have the scent circle. I have the buddy clip, depending on the type of organization it is. And I show them the different types. Around here, what I've had the most success with is the full showcase brochure fundraiser. But... I know there are some others that have had wonderful success with Scent Circle fundraisers or Buddy Clip fundraisers. So what I would do is have their options laid out for them and let them pick because I think it's going to depend on your location. I think it's going to depend on the type of organization. And I do know I talked to... Um, Patty Knight a little bit ago and we're going to set up a live video on strictly Scent Circle fundraisers and I'll post about that when I'm done. So I'm going to set that up for next Wednesday night and have her cover strictly Scent Circle fundraisers. So um, I'm not going to cover a lot of that right now and then I'll do one strictly on um, full showcase brochures. Right now I just kind of want to cover these questions but the as far as what's the best kind, there's really not a definitive answer for that. It's going to be more on what your organization likes. So present them, present all of them, or it's also more what it can be what you're comfortable with. 
you may be more comfortable with just doing scent circles. You may be more comfortable with just doing um, showcase brochures. So kind of go with that. And there's, like I said, there's no definitive answer. Um, hold on. Oh, y'all, if y'all don't have these, these are awesome. They're in the family store. I just got it in the other day. I love it. Um, okay, Jamie, you have no idea what you're doing. Okay, so what, um, let's see, I'm having a, oh, you're having a scent circle one next weekend. Uh, okay, well, great. That's not going to be this weekend then. Patty um, is going to cover everything on scent circle fundraisers on Wednesday night. So tune into that. And in the meantime, if you're trying to get some stuff together, let me know. And I might can help you get some stuff together on that. But there is some ins and outs to those as far as what you give back and everything. And like I said, Patty will cover all of that. Um, let's see. Organizations. What type of organizations? Where's my little sheet? I have got um, a little list. And I add to it all the time on what type of organizations are great to approach. Um, of course, schools, dance groups, I'm going to read it from my list, cheer groups, bands, uh, any sports organization, pet rescue societies, school clubs, school trips. And then we've got one of my successful ones has been mission trips. If you've got anyone from your local churches going on mission trips, those are great, and I want to cover real quick how I usually do my mission trip fundraisers, and they seem to work out well. With my mission trip fundraisers, it seems like um, they want to do more of the in-home party setting. So it'll be at an actual Sensi party. The only difference is when you, when you get ready to close it out, you're going to close it out as a fundraiser, so you, and you give your commission back to the uh the mission trip and i had a question the other night that if you are doing an individual fundraiser like that is it still a tax write-off with my mission trip fundraisers yes it is because i write my check to the organization that is sponsoring that mission trip like i think here one of the ones is called heart of the bride so I write my check to Heart of the Bride because they're sponsoring, they're taking care of that mission trip and putting it together. So it is a tax write-off. Um, something else that's been really good is, where was it? Um, I said mission trips, school trips, youth groups. A lot of times a youth group has a yearly getaway where they go and they do a yearly thing somewhere and... They do really well with fundraisers because they're actually fa raising funds for their for their self. It's not like a big school where you're only raising funds for the school itself. They are raising funds for themselves, so it helps to pay and cover their portion of the trips. So mom and dad don't want to cover that, so mom and dad are going to sell some Scentsy. So they tend to do really well. One of the other ones that's not on my list here that I've had a lot of success with and that a lot of people don't think about is nursing homes. I have a couple of nursing homes that have done Sensi fundraisers. And to be honest, I would not have thought of nursing homes either. They actually approached me. They approached me be from some of my Facebook posts regarding um, fundraisers. Mm -hmm. They thought it would be fun, it would be different. So I have had the employees at nursing homes, one of them, they took the showcase brochures, they did the full catalog, um, fundraisers and they used that and did it just like a regular fundraiser then um, the other nursing home that I do this will be their second year they're do they're gonna do it and I load up whatever stock I have whatever I have on hand I load it up I take it to the nursing home and we set up kind of a booth area right there in the lobby of the nursing home or right there where you walk in it's really not a lobby but right there where you walk into the nursing home. Now, they do this to fund things like their recreational department for the, for the people that live there, um, to fund things like 
for their residents to buy gifts for their families at Christmas or to buy the things to make gifts for their families. So they, they, do, those, they do fundraisers for that. Now with the one that I set up in the lobby, certainly it's a lot of employees that buy. So they kind of come through there <clears throat> and they buy whatever they want or they order. And then, um, of course, the residents' families as they go in and out. I set up mm -hmm. from a certain mm -hmm. time. And then after that, I will um, leave it open for about another week after that so they can continue to order. And then we close it out. And, of course, I give them the check the next month. Uh, real, there's something else I wanted to mention. Back to the, um, real quick, back to the, what was it, the mission trip. Mission Trip Fundraiser, one of the things I do is I give her my basket party about a week ahead of time and let her start doing it. And then we do the in-home party. And then about two days after the in-home party, we close it out. So just a tip there, go ahead and let them have like a basket party and be getting pre-orders. So that's just kind of a little tip. So, okay, that kind of covers some of the organizations that you can approach. And then there's individuals. Sorry, forgot about that. There's individuals. Um, I know that Martha mentioned, Martha Murray mentioned the other day that she did a really big fundraiser for someone with cancer. And it turned out really well. She did it as a open house or in-home type party. And the community came together and supported it. And I think they did $3,000 in sales really quick. Like that night, they did $3,000 in sales. So, um, because the community was getting something back, they were getting their sensi, and they were supporting a good cause. They were supporting someone they knew and loved, and they were getting their sensi. And then Martha was able to give back to the community in a way by giving to the cancer patient that needed the funds. So, that's another option. Um, See, so Celeste says, how long do you normally run a fundraiser? Uh, good question. I didn't cover that yet. I forgot to cover that. With my school fundraisers, two weeks. And I try to start it at the beginning of a month. I give them two weeks to do that fundraiser, and then the packets have to be turned back in. You're going to have stragglers. You're going to have people that turn them in. And that's why I started at the beginning of a month. They will turn them in late, usually. And, and I won't take them after three weeks. I will not take another packet, but within that, um, I, I do close it out at two, or not close it out. I do stop it at two weeks because you've got to get the product back to the customers. They're going to start wondering where it is. If you run it longer than two weeks, people tend to forget about it and you want to get all those packets in. So, and it usually takes a little while for the turnaround from the check from the school. So I, two weeks is my max, except for I'll let the stragglers come in as we're waiting on the check from the school. And then after that, I close it out. And another reason I start at the beginning of the month is because you want to be able to close it out before the end of the month. And if you start it too close to the end of the month, you're not going to be able to close it out in time. Or if even starting at mid-month, you're going to be pushing it to close it out in time to get it closed out before the end of the month because they're going to want their check. By, ne by the next month, and you don't get paid till the 10th, so uh, two weeks is my answer to that. Uh, let's see. One other little tip I want to give y'all. I see a lot of people that think they have to enter this a fundraiser as a party just to get the hostess rewards, and you don't. Um, you're welcome, Celeste. Uh, you don't. You can enter it as you do. I enter every fundraiser as a fundraiser. And I take that fundraiser, and that's so I can go back and I can look and see what fundraisers I've done for the year. Number one, for tax purposes for myself. Um, number two, it is a fundraiser. I, I would never enter fundraiser as a party. So um, I set it up online as a fundraiser. I enter it as a fundraiser, close it out as a fundraiser, the whole nine yards. And you will get your hostess rewards by doing that. And you'll get the exact same hostess rewards as you're going to get if you're entering it as a party. So enter as a fundraiser. Um, another little tip is when I have a fundraiser, 
say it's $2,000. One of the benefits to a fundraiser is the hostess rewards that you get back, the free and half price. So what I do is if I have a $2,000 fundraiser, I'm going to enter that as four or $500 parties so I can maximize my half prices. Now the only glitch to that is if you have a $2,000 fundraiser where the organization is tax exempt, Sensi Home Office has to adjust that tax for you and it has to go in under all one party and all one person. So that's kind of a side note to that. But if it's not tax exempt, I enter it, I break it up into $400 par or $500 parties to um, maximize my half prices because I'm gonna use that product I get for my half prices to recoup some of my funds that I've spent on my fundraiser packets. So I hope that helps some too. Now, um, big question that I, I've been seeing a lot, really big one. What do you put in your packets? So these are for, what I'm gonna show you is for full catalog fundraisers. I'm not gonna go into detail on any of the others because I do have to limit my time. I have children to pick up in a little bit. Um, so here is what I put in my full fundraiser packets. Now, um, and real quick, I use, I reuse my fundraiser packets. Always ask for the extra packets that they have. Always ask for them back. Um, if not, if it's a school or a big organization, they don't think about it and they'll throw it away. Well, that's money down the drain that you can reuse with another fundraiser. So always ask for those packets back. So, one thing that I use, I always use the Scentsy fundraising envelope in the family store. To me, this looks more professional. It looks, um, now everybody's got their own way. There are some that will use vanilla envelopes. There are some, you know, whatever, whatever you want to use is fine. I think, personally, I use these. They're inexpensive. They're in the family store. I just tack them onto a, a regular party order so I don't have to pay shipping. And these are what I use. These are perfect. There's fundraising instructions on the back for them. There's places for them to write names so they can keep up with their money and their, you know, keep everything tallied. And it's an envelope to have everything in together. Um, one of the things I will do that I like, and you don't have to do this either, is I will put this little sheet and all this is is I print about six of them per page and I just type up a little note on here and I'll put all of kind of the important information because you've got it all in your packet inside on the parent info sheet but a lot of times parents don't look at that so anyway I put I, and it's just I cut it up and staple it to the outside so they have a quick reference there and this was a uh, Washington DC trip fundraiser for, I think it was fifth or sixth grade at a school. So I put it all at the top and then it just says, Dear Parents, please see enclosed sheet for all information. There are some great new products and prizes. Return fundraiser to, and I put the fundraiser coordinator, by Sunday, February 14th. Please help support your child by participating in this fall fundraiser. If you have any questions, please contact and then it has my name and my cell phone number and I put call or text because some people don't want to call they'll just but they'll text you and I highlight things like the fundraiser coordinator the due date especially and then my information so that gives them a quick reference so then inside my packets inside my packets I have now this is an old one but I have the showcase brochure Showcase brochures, if you don't, I know a lot of, some people don't know what those are. They don't realize we have them. They're really just a fundraiser brochure, in my opinion. Um, they're a great little, or it's kind of a 8.5 by 11 or 8 by 10 of our catalog. So these are what they call showcase brochures. They're inexpensive. Um, they're 5 or $6 for 25 of them in the family store. And... They have everything in them except the combine and saves. Because with a, with a fundraiser, you want to maximize the amount of 
funds that are raised, so they do not put the combined and saves in here. Not to mention, it gets confusing with when you've got 800 kids out there and they're selling Sensi and people are trying to decide, well, do I want to combine and save? Do I want this? No, here they can just order exactly what they want. And these are also really good to use, just a side note, at events, if you do events, they're great to have out at events because when someone wants to order a warmer or they want to see what warmers we actually have, you can open this up and it's a whole lot easier to reference than trying to flip through our catalog. Now I do give our catalogs away at events, but this is just a lot easier. So these are great. I put the $99 sticker on them on every single one. I will um, get my kids, we'll get in the floor and I let my kids label. As you can see, this is randomly stuck on here, just kind of in the middle of the page. It's because my children did it. So um, I always put the $99 sticker on there. Just kind of a great marketing tool. Then, um, where is my little sheet? Sorry, y'all. So what I will put on top of this, now this is the way I do it. When I stuff these envelopes, I put the parent info sheet, the tax cheat sheet, and the order forms on top of the showcase brochure. That way they have to see this first. So I have that on the top. May help, may not, it's kind of what I do. Okay, so parent info sheet. This is gonna have all the information they're gonna need. It's a lot of information. They may or may not read it. That's why I do that outside one. It has the benefits of Scentsy and Wickless Candles. It has um, little tips on how to use them. That they're great gifts, and it has little information about that. Um, also has an area so they know what's included in the packet and who to contact. Um, and it has an FAQ on there. Who to make your checks payable to, things like that. So, and it also has on there if I'm offering prizes or not. And when it involves children, I always offer prizes. And prizes can be anything you want. It can be gift cards. It can be uh, using some of your free and half price to get buddies, buddy clips. Um, one of the things that I'll do too is I'll offer a, um, a little, I have a teacher sheet somewhere. I don't even know where it is. But I will um, offer kind of a little contest between the teachers where um, the classroom that sells the most, so they encourage their students, but the classroom that sells the most will get, um, that teacher will get a warmer and three bars. And the last time I did that, I could tell which teacher promoted it the most. So when I went in her classroom to bring her her prize, I said, you must have really promoted this fundraiser because your kids sold more than any classroom and I could not believe how much more your kids sold. And she said, oh yeah, I told them that they needed to get out there or they needed to get their parents to sell to support our PTO. Well, um, the kids started speaking up and I thought it was hilarious because the kids were like, yeah, she told us she wanted to win that, that Scentsy warmer and those scents, so we better sell. And if we did sell, she'd give us a pizza party if we won. So she made it a fun game with her kids and it worked perfect. But it was because she wanted that warmer. So, because if not, some of the teachers won't even promote it. So just a kind of side note. But I also have a little, and I don't know if this one has it in it or not. Um, I'm trying to see. Oh, okay, in the FAQ. How can I earn free products and, and still support my organization? Well, what I will do is um, if they want to host a party, uh, if they want to do a basket party or a home party, and their party, of course, reaches party total, then they'll earn, of course, the free and half price. But what I do, if they tell me that they that they found out about me or they um, heard about me or somebody told them about me from this fundraiser, then I will turn around and give 10% of my commission, not my whole commission like I do the fundraiser, but 10% of my commission, I will give back to that organization or that school or whoever, um, 
as just kind of a thank you for getting this party. So, parent info sheet. Now, the parent info sheet, I don't know if the revamped one that this is is in there or not. I think it should be. If not, I'll upload it. But I know there's an old one in there, and you can go in and edit this document with all of your information. It is a Word document, and if it's the old one, it's got the old logo up here. But uh, parent info sheet is in the document or file section. So the next thing is, if you have to charge tax, which the majority of my fundraisers, I have to charge tax. I've never had a problem with it. The schools don't have a problem with it. Um, I have a tax cheat sheet. Um, where can you find which one? The parent info tax sheet. It's all going to be, if you look, and I can't pull it up right now, but if you look on the Facebook group page, there is a section that's called files or documents. And under that, there are tons of documents and files. And that, that particular one is called parent info sheet, I believe. So, and you may have to search through there for it. And I may, I, when I get off here, if I have time before I go get my son, I'll look and see if I have the new one uploaded. And if I don't, I'll upload it for you. Um, tax cheat sheet, I have never had a problem at all with charging tax. Now, the way some of these other companies get around, like, you know, the, the tubs of cookie dough or whatever else they do, the way they get around... Um, yeah, the fundraising one. It's on this page that you're on right now, the fundraising page. Um, the way they get around charging tax is they really are charging tax. What they're doing is including tax in that $20 for a box of candy, and they're just rounding it up. So um, you're welcome. So, but, I, you know, we can't do that. So I just put this in there, the tax info or tax cheat sheet is what I call it, and that's in there too. That is an Excel document, so you can go into that Excel document and update it with all of your information, um, whatever whatever you want to put on here. I don't put everything just because it can take up too much room, and I only want one page because I don't want to have to print out two. So I do not put everything. I just kind of put random stuff on there where they can see the prices. So it'll have price and then the tax and then total, and they can just kind of refer to it. Um, here's the other thing I use, and, um, oops, sorry y'all, um, other thing I use is the, something that has, is questionable, and you have to kind of, um, use your own judgment if you want to use it or not. Some people like to use it. Ooh, my phone's falling again. Um, I know compliance has told some people that they can't use it, but when I did my, um, and we're talking order forms now, when I did my fundraiser presentation in Vegas a few years ago at Reunion, I told Home Office that I was going to show these because this is what I use, and they did not have a problem with it. So... You can use these at your own discretion. Um, when you're dealing with 800 or 1,000 kids, it's really difficult to be able to afford the regular Sensi order forms and put in there. I can't afford that. I don't know about y'all, but I can't. When I'm doing small fundraisers, um, then with the small fundraisers, yes, by all means, use our regular order forms. So, um, because that's what we know is... The correct way so here they are they're in this is in the document section this is a fundraiser order form that Sensi used to use now if you get in trouble for using it don't blame me <laughs> so like I said I got the approval from a few of them at home office to show this in um, in Vegas a few years ago and I still I continue to use it for my large fundraisers so that's kind of your choice. Um, this is an old fundraising form that Sensi used to have. I ran across them. They had them when I first joined, and I ran across them when I was cleaning out a filing cabinet one day. 
and they used to be the carbon copies like our regular ones now um, what I did is I just scanned it in and uploaded it as a PDF file to keep on my computer it has three places for people to order it has all the organization sellers name everything at the top on the back now if you do use these I recommend doing them front back and put because on the back it has the cancellation date notice of cancellation all the things that our regular um, order forms are going to have on them so it has that on the back so if you use them I highly recommend photocopying them like this so that way um, that way you have you're kind of covering yourself but um, when I do use these because they are not photocopy I mean because they are not carbon copy what I'll do is and, and you're required to give your customer a copy of their order form so what I do is I take these order forms as soon as I get them back and I will make copies myself I'll take each individual one um, I wouldn't recommend copying the re um, let's see Hazel said can we copy the regular order forms I would not recommend copying the regular order forms um, just because we still have them available to purchase so um, and the only the only reason reason I say use these um, that I use these is because it has three places for customers to order not just one so you're saving you're saving money you're saving um, paper and that's why I do it like that so okay so um, anyway I will take these each individual form order form out of each say I'm doing a school out of each student's packet I make copies of their orders on that student and then I put it back in the packet and set it aside and I do that for each individual one I know it sounds time-consuming and it is when you're dealing with a large school but the whole large school fundraiser thing is time-consuming um, but that's how I do it I set the original entire order for the entire packet to the side so I can keep those I do not touch those again they are all um, set order organized and set aside for uh, when the orders come in and then I use that way I don't have to keep the order forms organized in the in who what belongs to who I have my working copies so I will keep all of those as my working copies so I can mark off as I enter that order I mark everything off and that's my copy that I will always have and I will always always have to refer back to so when customers get their orders I can refer back to that and say oh well no your order form says you ordered this because you're gonna have people say that they ordered something when they didn't and if you don't have proof and you don't have a copy of that order form then you're liable for it so I can go back to my copy and say no this is what you ordered this copy the original copy um, I will cut these and each original copy will go back with in that order in that in that bag so um, that kind of covers what I put in my packets um, now when I get ready to deliver I have it all separated into um, student and teacher or I mean and I'm referring to schools a lot because that's what a lot of people have questions about so if you have questions about other ones you know feel free to ask but because I know I refer to schools a lot oh real quick see here's a copy here's copies of my working order forms and I just staple them all together I had done that and I kind of make my notes on them and everything like that so because you might have to call a customer if they're wanting a scent pack that it doesn't come in and so I make all my little notes on that so um, where was I going next sorry y'all what's in the packet and then oh separating them out and then I deliver them now that's one of the things I wanted to get to and I really should have mentioned first um, one of the benefits of a Cincy fundraiser okay Shanna Milligan um, thanks I'm glad um, you think my dear make you laugh 
I love you anyway. Apparently, my best friend is watching. So, um, anyway. Now you've, like, thrown me off. Thanks. Okay, benefits. One of the benefits to a Scentsy fundraiser. When you go to get a, when you go to try to approach someone about a Scentsy fundraiser and, um, you're trying to sell your fundraiser, kind of, they're going to come back with, well, we don't make as much off of that fundraiser as we do off of the cookie dough or whatever. You know, cookie dough, things like that are going to give 50% back. We can give maximum 30 on a traditional um, showcase brochure fundraiser. We can give, you know, maximum 30% if they sell over 2000 So here's the benefit when you're dealing especially with um, PTOs in large schools. When you're dealing with them, they have to do all of the work, usually with a fundraiser. They have to get all the forms out. They have to get everything delivered. They have to get everything organized and everything um, separated. They have to find volunteers to help. Nobody wants to volunteer. It is the hardest thing in the world. If you've ever been part of a PTO or president of the PTO, you know it is the hardest thing in the world to get people to volunteer. So um, one of the benefits that we can do is sell ourselves and sell our, our services. And the school has come back with, that is the easiest fundraiser we've ever done. Because they don't have to lift a finger, really. They don't have to do anything. We do it all. I let them know that um, I'll get all the packets together. I deliver all the packets. I put them in the teacher's boxes. Um, I let them know to make an announcement that the that the fundraiser will be going home. Um, when the orders come in, of course, I collect all the packets. I work with the bookkeeper with the money, and then I will um, take all of those orders and input them. When they come in, I do all of the separating, all of the labeling, all, all of it, and then I deliver. PTO don't have to do anything, and that's something that they love. So, yeah, they're not making as much, but they're getting a lot of benefit out of it by not having to do the work. So that's one of the main selling points to a Cincy fundraiser is your personal services. Um, let's see. Another thing that you can do, a lot of times they will not announce to the kids or they, the teachers don't tell the kids. They just stick it, you know, when you're dealing with little ones, they'll just stick it in their backpack. Um, and parents don't always look in the kids' backpacks. So what I do is I make some sort of little flyer. And I'm not good at making flyers. I just kind of throw something together. But I make it look professional. Um, it has to have the Scentsy logo on it. And I will put on there in big, big writing, Scentsy Fundraiser going on now. Um, I put on there the due date, the prizes, the date it went home, um, just different information. And I try to put pictures of what the prizes may be because um, that gives the kids and the parents a visual. And it makes it colorful. And I take those signs, of course I get permission first, but I take those signs and I will post them around the school. When you go in and out of a school, you see, um, and the school's doing a fundraiser, you'll see the fundraiser or they've got picture day or anything like that. You'll see it right there on the inside window of where you walk in. Well, that's where I put my Scentsy flyers. I will put them on the window at the, as you enter the, into the school office. I will put them on every window when, of every door around the school going in and out of that school. Um, we have big post kind of things in our, one of our schools. And so I'll take them to the post. And you can get permission. Some schools will allow you, some won't, to put them on the walls. So it's just, that's an individual thing. Put them in the lunchroom. Anywhere that you think these kids are going to see it, because the kids are going to see the prizes, anywhere you think these parents are going to see it, that will help promote it. Um, set it up online. That's another thing on the parent info sheet. Set it up online so they, ha they have a link where they're out of town friends and family can order from. Um, and I think that only thing I really didn't cover is um, benefits. Benefits of a Scentsy fundraiser are going to be your trip points. It's going to be 
your PRV, uh, annual sales award, um, PRV to go towards annual sales award. Um, let's see, what are some other, there are so many benefits. I've got it somewhere. Um, PRV, annual sales award. The fact that you're giving back to your community, that's a big benefit. It gets your name out there. It gets you um, new customers, brand awareness. Hold on, sorry. Um, I already said incentive trip point. Um, let's see. Uh, you'll get stock to turn around and resale parties, possible parties, and um, recruits. You're going to get new customers. People move in and out of areas all the time, and they may not know. They may not know about Sensi. Number one, they may know about Sensi and not have a consultant. So you're going to get new customers. So that's just some of the benefits of a Sensi fundraiser. Um, and I, uh, one last thing is, I, one last thing I want y'all to remember mm -hmm. is, you're going to get no's. You're going to get people that aren't interested. You're going to get people that say you don't give enough back. Ah. Canada. I love Canada. Been there one time and I loved it. Hey, Jean. Um, you're going to get people that say you don't give enough back or you're going to get people that aren't interested. And that's okay. It's okay to have the no's. It's okay to have people not interested in our fundraisers. Don't take it personal. Don't let it get to you. Don't let it get you down because the next person may be the yes. Five people five more no's, you may get a yes. So, um, and then again, honestly, it's kind of like recruiting because they say, don't be afraid of the no's. Oh, Megan's from Canada too. Yay. Um, they say, don't be afraid of those no's. And this is kind of the same thing. You're going to get those no's, but you never know when you're going to get a yes. And when you get that yes, it is, it's awesome. And you're excited. And then you go, Oh crap, now what do I do? So um, don't be afraid of the no's and get out there and try your best to, to let people know that you do fundraisers. And just because you get a no from an organization or from someone does not mean that um, that no is going to be always a no. It, I got, honestly, I got a no from my daughter's dance studio the very first time I ever asked. Um, I didn't give up. I asked again the next year. I eventually got a yes. And I, they got really excited about it. And But it took the studio owner starting to use Scentsy and realizing how much she loved it before I ever got a yes. So... Um, just because it's a no right then don't, doesn't mean it's always a no. So get out there and let people know that you do fundraisers. Post on Facebook. Um, talk to people. Find something you have in common. And get those fundraisers. And if y'all have any questions, let me know. I may not get back to you immediately. I do have three kids and um, they are very active. So don't forget, I'm going to post about it. Patty Knight is going to go over Scent Circle fundraisers. She's going to go live on Wednesday night and go over that, and I will post the information for that. And then any other questions y'all have, we can go over that, and I can go live again. And thank y'all so much for tuning in, and I will see, I'll make sure and try to figure out how to get this to post so you can go back and refer to it and refer your teams to it. Bye, guys.